What's going on guys, Balkan Arctic here and today we have another video in my advanced BIM analysis with the Bexel Manager series. So if you don't know, uh, this is a series that they have been uh, doing for a while now and uh, there is actually a playlist so you can check it out by hitting that uh, card uh, up uh, above. Uh, so this is basically a series where we talk about, well, advanced BIM analysis uh, with uh, the use of the Bexel Manager software. Uh, also important thing to mention, uh, this is a sponsored uh, video and I'm just going to be uh, showing you today, uh, well, the topic of today's video is going to be a, the process of uh, schedule optimization as well as, and this is the fun part, creating a construction animation. Uh, so this is an extension on the previous video where we have covered uh, smart 4D and 5D uh, planning and now we're just creating this really, really cool uh, construction animation, uh, which, uh, which is going to be really fun. So <laughs> let's jump into it. In the first part of this video, I will show you various automated options for scheduled fine tuning, and I will cover principles that will help you to optimize the initial schedule created in the Smart BIM environment. If you want to learn more about Smart 4D and 5D uh, scheduling creation with uh, the Bexel Manager, uh, watch the video in the description. The second part of the video is focused on schedule animation options and settings. I will show you how to create uh, animation and how to apply different analysis directly on the simulation by color coding rules and so much more. Before we start, just a quick reminder of uh, a smart scheduling workflow and the topics that will be covered in this video. Now, without losing any more time, let's go to the model. Okay, let's start. We will work on the initial QTO-based schedule created in the previous lesson. I will activate task coloring option, uh, which will color task uh, rows and bars by task colors, uh, predefined for each leaf and parent task. Of course, you can change the colors at any time if needed. Before we start, let's take a look at the reports for this uh, initial schedule. Finally, let's begin. First, I want, for example, to change the task duration for some activities in the schedule. I can easily select elements in the user interface and filter tasks with these elements, which will automatically select within the Gantt chart and just change the duration. Easy, right? In the same manner, we can select all structural works and reduce the duration of construction activities, for example, on 32 working hours. By clicking on the button apply, all changes are automatically reflected on task and schedule duration. Of course, you can uh, direct, uh, directly select parent and leaf task within the Gantt chart or automatically select all dependent leaf tasks for selected parent tasks and fine tune them. Another great way to analyze and optimize schedules is the uh, flow line chart, where we can select and change activities within a location-based schedule view. Just select activities and fine tune them. Options for fine tuning are the same as in the Gantt chart. Again, if we select elements within the user interface uh, with the option find task with elements, we can automatically select uh, tasks within the flow line viewer pop out view and change the duration of selected tasks. Also, we can change task constraints from as soon as possible to as late as possible, for example, and see reflected changes within the line of balance view. Selected tasks in the Gantt uh, we can find in the line of balance using the option find in line of balance and vice versa. By activating the critical path view in the coloring option, you can see all tasks that are on the critical path. Any delays in the critical tasks will delay the rest of the project. So I have shown you the main principles and automation in fine tuning, a uh, cumulative cost for the schedule after optimization looks like this. In this schedule, we do not have resources defined. I will switch to another schedule within the same model to show you one more option for scheduling optimization, and that's resource leveling. 
Before that, I will open the task editor to show you the level of information for each task when you create a smart schedule using the Bexel Manager. You can instantly get information about cost, quantities, resources, element QTO, activities for the selected tasks, and so much more. It's very useful, right? Let's see how it looks uh, like labor chart within the task report for one optimized task. Now take a look at the task report for the main parent task for this schedule. I will show you resource leveling for the example on Glazers. I will select the parent task and hit the leveling button. Here you can define the period of uh, resource leveling, choose and filter resources and set the maximum number of resources that can be used daily. Hit OK, then apply button and, the, and a window with a list of all over allocated resources on the task will open. Hit resolve and OK. We can notice that the overall schedule duration has changed and on the labor chart we can notice differences in the glazers distribution. I will repeat once again, uh, this is just an example. We have come to the second part of the video where the focus will be on the schedule animation. So let's switch to the schedule animation tab and hit the update button to activate the current schedule within this form. For the start, I will activate one of the already available animations within the sample model and later I will explain the creation process. Activate Schedule Viewer. First, let's open Settings. In the General tab, uh, the user is able to define duration, frame rate, start and finish date of the simulation. The interval type could be hourly, daily, weekly or monthly and by defining that simulated elements of the building will be shown in the defined time period. Group of commands on the right side of the window refers to color coding and display settings of elements in, anima uh, in animation where we are able to define the distinction between elements in progress as well as completed elements. To color code elements by schedule task or to make a distinction of incomplete uh, or elements on a critical path. First, let's see the animation with the option constant color fully opaque. Uh, in the group completed elements, I will use the option normal colors upon completion. Confirm the settings with the OK button. Hit the play button. Elements that are currently active are colored in yellow and the completed elements are in real textures and colors. We can switch to task view and see task progress during the animation. Let's go back to settings, change active and completed elements in simulation to be colored by task color from the schedule. Confirm the settings and then click the OK button. Hit the play button. Elements that are currently active are colored in task colors and completed elements will keep the task color. Once again, let's go to the settings. Set for active and completed elements, option color coded view and click OK. I will activate the 3D color coded view on the right side of the window. The building elements will apply colors from the active custom breakdown shown on the left side of the screen to construction simulation. If we change the active custom breakdown, elements in the simulation will automatically apply colors from the chosen CBS. Before I explain how to create animation in the Bexel Manager, uh, let me quickly switch to task editor options to show you additional settings for displaying elements within the animation. Uh, you can set various parameters for each task. Uh, is the type of work uh, demolition or construction, element, uh, elements color, uh, elements ordering and animation and so much more. Now let's create the animation. Switch to display animation. For this purpose, I will set coloring by task color and hit OK. Click on new animation and name it and hit OK. Select the animation and click on the set active tab. Now the animation is active and ready for the next steps. The next step will be the creation of keyframes. We are setting them by choosing the time frame and position of the model in the 3D view. 
Now we can set keyframes. You can define the uh, you can define the name frame, inner eye distance, focal length. Uh, I will create uh, just a few for the purpose of this video, uh, but the user is able to define keyframes as much as he needs. Now let's play the created animation. Anytime you can fine tune settings and finally export the animation choosing export type, video file, JPEG or PNG sequence, codecs and additional parameters. Also, you can export it to Unreal Engine and continue working on the visual presentation of the model. And that's pretty much it for today. So I hope you have enjoyed this video. Uh, for more uh, tips, you can always check out the Bexel webinars. The links will be in the description of this video. So just uh, below the video. Uh, and I will see you very soon uh, with more. So stay tuned. Thank you for watching, guys. Make sure to check out my website, BalkanArctic.com, for more uh, Revit courses. Uh, there I have over 120 hours of content, uh, and I'm adding more each week. Make sure to subscribe for more videos, and also I've added a video over there that might interest you as well.